outfits. They're either good or they're booty cheeks, like plain and simple. And when I was in high school, middle school, elementary school, I had no oh drip, like zero. Like I walked into the room with neon socks in middle school. Yeah, those knee high neon, well, not, they weren't knee high, but still. I would have blue shorts and like the neon socks, like ugh. It makes me cry just thinking about it. Just the amount of negative drip I had walking into the room. So today we're gonna rank some of the most common outfits in school or the most out there. So first off, we'll start with the middle schooler neon look since I already brought it up. Bright colors, that bright highlighter color that'll practically fucking blind you. Not a single day goes by without them wearing Under Armour. And that's the go-to brand in the neon sock trip. We're, we're gonna go D tier with that. It's booty. Then you got the hype beast. This kid just pulls up with all designer clothes head to toe like he's a rapper. He's got the grills in. He's got like 50 chains. You can hear him halfway down the hallway just, just by his chains jingling. Never mind. He was not repping the chains. And if he was repping the chains, it was either daddy's money or they were fake as hell. But he usually rocked Supreme, Gucci, Bape, literally any expensive brand. He got Louis too. Forgot about Louis V. Now that's cool if you actually like to wear expensive clothes, but, but if you're that one kid that brags about all your expensive clothing, then fuck you genuinely. Like no one cares, Rice Gum, Jesus. So for my presentation, I decided to do just a quick tour of the closet. So we got the Yeezy Red Octobers. Those go for like 17K. You already know we got the Travis Scotts. Yeah, all right. You get the point. He wouldn't do a whole presentation of his drip, obviously, but he's out here bragging. If you're the bragger hype beast, then you're just a walking L. And just because of you, E tier. Then you got basic drip, which, of course, it's basic. So, just think of any piece of clothing or any shoes that everyone and their mama wearing. Like the Air Force One. Now, of course, if you keep them clean, then great. That, that's awesome. But if, you're, if they're looking like this, then throw them bitches out. Me, personally, I don't want to be seen walking out the house with a dirty pair of forces. Like, I'm my entire front yard on that bitch. Like, hell no. I'm basically the embodiment of basic drip. I just wear like name brand shirts like Nike all the time, which honestly, I feel like it's good enough for me. So wh whatever you prefer, I guess. Like I just throw a Nike shirt on with a pair of jeans or a pair of sweatpants and my Jordans or forces and call it a day. And I don't want to have insane bias either just because I, I am the embodiment of the basic kid. So we'll go C tier. Then you got the furnace. Now this kid will always be wearing shorts. No matter how cold it is out. Might depend where you live. It could be really warm year round. But in my area, it gets pretty cold. And sometimes you will catch me doing it. I am that kid. I, I somehow have like some furnace installed into my fucking legs. But of course, I got my limits. I can't be doing it out here in like 30 degree weather. If it's below 40, you could say goodbye. But overall, it's just a basic fit. It's just shorts and a graphic t-shirt. Nothing too crazy. It's not like there's Sam Smith out there on the runway. But this one, I don't know. We'll go C tier again. I don't, I don't know, man. I might change some around at the end of the video. Then you got Musty. Now this kid will literally wear his gym clothes that are soaked in sweat for the rest of the day. Bro would be going crazy on the court in gym class and then then in, in this kid's next period class you could just smell the must. Maybe from like a mile radius you could you could probably smell it. Like if bro opens up them underarms it's over. You could say goodbye to your nostrils. Musty you're going in F tier bro. Bring a change of clothes man. Then you got the gym bro fit, the tracksuit fit, the athletic fit. I don't know what you call it. But it's a pretty chill fit. Sweatpants, sweatshirt, sweat, everything, goddamn shorts, whatever it is. But hey, man, you are ready to run at all times at lightning speed like you say in bold. So you know what? Props to you. If there's someone that spins the block, you're ready. If there's a fire, you're ready. You're always 10 toes. And I would rep this fit because I would go to the gym after school. So you would probably see me in this fit too. I don't know why I fit in like all these categories. I'm sure most of you do anyway. But we're gonna give this fit an A tier. Then you got the dude that sags his pants. Like, I don't know how people can walk like they just piss themselves. Like, it feels uncomfortable. Like, I don't get it. And the real confusing part to me is how this even became a trend. Like, I'm seriously curious. Why do people sag their pants? And then there's always those teachers that, like, tell them to, like, pull their pants up. Like, why are you looking down there? Like, no one wants to see your Captain Underpants at underwear. Like, I get it. You want you want to show off your underwear drip, but damn. We don't gotta see all that. E tier. Then you got nerdy drip. This one's fizzling out, but you might, see, might still see that one kid that pulls up to the room looking like Uncle Grandpa. Like, do do people even wear those suspenders anymore? And I don't think anyone would willingly go to school like this unless it was like 
picture day and their mom made them look like that. Like, there's no one that would actually willingly go to school looking like this. I mean, unless you got a uniform that looks like that. That's just tough. But if you actually had a choice, no one would voluntarily wear this. And it's even more painful being a guy because your ball sack's in a chokehold. It's getting strangled out here. And if you see someone wearing this drip voluntarily, all right, they remind the teacher of the homework. And if they get a 99 on the test, they'll literally have a mental breakdown. F tier. Who's wearing this unless you're at gunpoint? Like, seriously. It just looks so uncomfortable. Then you get the TikTok e-girl e-boy fit. I already know these motherfuckers are out here doing TikToks in the bathroom. What the hell is this kid doing? You know what? I'm not even gonna get in the way of him. You know what? I'm just gonna go back into my stall and keep playing Clash Royale. You know what? We'll let bro cook. I'm sure you've seen this person in your school. Usually the guy's got like some perm going on and then the girl's rocking like some highlights. Maybe a completely different color hair if she's out here getting offended over some BS. Like she definitely got offended at Mr. Beast. Like I don't know how you get offended at that guy. Like he's the GOAT. And they always got a monster in hand. Well, some of them at least. I don't know how people drink monster. That shit is so bad for you. And it tastes like booty cheeks. You know no, we'll go eh, D tier. I don't know. Then you got formal business professional. Everyone's dressing up like this for picture day. If they got like a presentation that's going on. And yeah, most people, they, they can pull it off. They got the suit drip on deck. Like every time I see someone walking down the hallway, I'm like, I just marvel at their drip. It just has to go in S tier unless they completely fuck it up. Formal drip, you, one, you put in a lot of effort, two, it should just be a crime to be that drippy. There also are some downsides, too, because uh, it, could, it could get a bit sweaty. Overall, it's drippy, S tier. Then you got anime drip. Now, of course, any normal anime t-shirt is fine. Personally, I wouldn't rep it, but if someone's got, like, their favorite anime it? waifu on, on their shirt, he's got, like, Cheeto crumbs in his fucking beard hairs, and a fedora, then I know not to go near that guy. Or if you wear that one hoodie. Me personally, I would not be caught dead wearing that, but of course it's your choice at the end of the day. Anime drip, it's a coin toss. Yeah, I don't even know if I can show this, but yeah, it really is a coin toss. There's some crazy anime drip out there. E tier. Then you got the gamer drip. I pause my game to be here? What the? That's like that fifth grader drip for real. I don't think I'd see anyone in like high school wear that. That's the only that's the only L shirt in that in this gaming category, I would say. The other shirts, they're just nostalgic. I would never wear them now, but they do have a special place in my heart. The Mario, the Pokemon, the Minecraft, the whatever. The shirts with the stick figures on it, like, you know what I mean. The cartoon shirts, like, you know what? Well, we'll go with the nice beats here for that. The pause my game to be here, that, that knocked it down a peg. Then you get the Hawaiian summer drip. Now, I don't know how many people wear Hawaiian shirts to your school, or that summer drip. You know, it just gets me in the mood for the summer, so it, it, you know, it's already good. When I see people repping the Hawaiian shirts or those like button down shirts with like the short sleeves and the cargo shorts or just like any summery summer ish t-shirts summer is here like w automatic w we're going s tier bro then you got youtuber merch and obviously this one's gonna be biased because i'm a youtuber but you know what? We'll, we'll go with it we'll throw it as an like an honorable mention you know what it, it's going in the a tier i don't care we gotta fill that shit up pause if you enjoyed the video i got you i got another video right there just for you on the end screen go watch it now the function. It's gotta be a place you pull up once in a while. I've been to a couple parties. I'm not really a party animal out here, but I think I'm qualified enough. I think I've been to enough parties to make a video on the types of people at the function. So why not start with the follower? Now the follower just sticks with the group and just follows them the entire night. Like if they all jumped off a cliff, he would end up going too. Like these they are afraid to be alone at the party. Like it's all good to be alone for one second. Like it's okay, you know, you can let them go. You can let them take a piss in peace. This usually happens when someone doesn't really want to branch off and play games with other people, go talk to other people, and then they just end up looking like a lost puppy the entire time. Yeah, this one used to be me. Now, this next one is a quote. Where the h at? Oh my god. You know, the funny thing about this kid, we, we all know him. We all know one person that's like this, and he's always asking, where the h that, bro? Oh, where are the girls at? Uh? And when they actually show up, bro's on the weather app. Like, bro, what are you doing? The weather in Santa Clara can wait and stop calculating 10 plus 3 i see you over there the girls are here what are you doing bro no oh 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 he's on he's on settings now oh shit. 
You know, it's a fire clash of clans base you got there. This dude will beg for the girls to pull up, and then when they actually show up, he's over here over there scrolling on his phone. Like, damn, go Riz up. Be like the next type of person at the party. The Rizzler. Now we're all rocking with the Rizzler. This dude just got immaculate Riz. Like, in the matter of minutes, he will have girls all over him at the party. Like, it's crazy. It's like it's like a goddamn magic trick. Like, poof, they're there. Because that's how immaculate his Riz is. It's like top tier is Duke Dennis. Like, you'll see him spit in game to like five different girls in one night. Or maybe even more than that. Next up, we got the randoms, the NPCs. Where did you come from, bro? <laughs> they just spawn in. I don't know where they come from. Like, I don't know. I could just be on the dance floor turning up to like Jimmy Cooks. And then I could just see some random kid that I have never seen in my life before. Didn't even see him when I walked in. Like, these motherfuckers spawn in, I swear. <laughs> the wasted now the wasted kid is just gone bro drinks like 10 to 14 and he is just gone yo you want to run up some cup pong you want to be on my team hey 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 yeah 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 let's do it dude yeah ah oh, we're gonna lose now i really just asked the sloshed kid great well we're about to lose and this kid cannot walk home all right and two people usually gotta help him back to his room or wherever he's at or we'll take him like 30 minutes to order an uber because he's just like missing his phone yeah don't be this guy it's not fun drink responsibly please the frat guy and now for these types of parties with the frat guy in them there has to be a ratio that needs to be met. And this frat guy's dream ratio is more girls than guys. Like, if you are a freshman guy trying to get into a party, good luck. Yo, is Alpha Big Maligma throwing a party tonight? Yeah, bro. Oh, bro, where are your girls at, man? I, I don't poll like that. Like, bro, you guys are gonna fuck up the ratio. Sorry, it's already a sausage fest in there. And that's really how it goes if you're a freshman on a college campus. I mean, it's up in the air if frats are respectable. I have no idea. But some of them, if you get no, if you have no girls, Girls or drinks or anything they'll be like oh bro get the fuck off the property or whatever i don't know next up we got the corner kid this dude is in the corner the entire time now maybe that's due to him being shy or whatever or he's just vibing i don't know like it's crazy you look over and then 20 minutes later you look in the same spot and he's there like he's just vibing the entire time he doesn't dance he doesn't do anything he just sits there with his drink and just sips away and bro is just posted up then you got the host bro i'm the host but no i'm not here out here throwing ragers like crazy Crazy. Now, I usually hold gatherings with the gang. Now, it's pretty chill. It's awesome. And, you know, hosting, you gotta have a good area. It can't be some small-ass house and you're trying to fit everyone in. Like, come on, let's have a rager. Like, no, it's just not gonna work. Everyone's gonna feel like they're in a goddamn sardine can. A nice big open space. You gotta have games. And also, you gotta supply. You gotta have a good supply of drinks or else you're just an awful host. Took me a bit to get the hang of it, but we finally got it. Next up, we got the DJ or the ox kid. Now, this kid could either have a loud-ass boom box or he could either have a dj at the party with you now the dj better be playing good songs or else he's getting kicked out the party all right he can't be playing any of this or else there's gonna be a problem yo, yo get that what are you doing now, kick this motherfucker out asap <laughs> As a DJ or an ox kid, you gotta have respectable music taste. Or else things are not gonna be looking good for you. Everyone's gonna want someone else to take ox, or if you're a DJ, you're gonna get your ass kicked out. But if you're a request DJ, do not take, like, one of those goofy Minecraft parodies, or We Are Number One, or some, like, really shitty meme song or whatever. It's just gonna kill the vibe. You gotta pick songs that everyone fucks with and they're classics. Now, that's how you get the, the entire function turning up. Next up, we got the Paranoid Kid. Now, this dude is paranoid that there's gonna be a noise complaint and the ops bust the party and then they gotta dash out that bitch like Usain Bolt and run away. They already got their exit plan and everything even though the party isn't even that loud and it's not even like disruptive at all. They will still be paranoid no matter what. Like they got a whole ass escape plan and everything mapped out. The stoner. Now this kid is sent to Yodi land. He is gone. He he's just gonna be like glitching. He's gonna be staring at the wall like an NPC. He's gonna be just so amazed by the texture of the wall. Wait. Wait, yo, are you good, bro? I think he's gone. Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, holy smokes, dude. It's gnarly, man. You better get any stacks, man. Oh my god, this dude is booted in another universe. Yeah, like, look at him. He's just gazing at the wall in just amazement. Next up, we got the sober kid. Now, you are a brave soul if you go to a party sober. But like, you're just gonna be around a bunch of wasted people. I don't know, that might ruin the vibe for you. Whenever I see someone wasted out of their mind and they start talking to me, I say, like, the dumbest shit ever. You know, I just go along with whatever dumb statement they said. Honestly, it makes it fun. But for some people, it could just annoy them. 
one. So I don't know. If you're that type of person and there's gonna be beverages at a party, I would not be going sober if I were you. Next up, we got the dude that has to make it a big statement when he's wasted. The yo, I'm wasted guy. I'm so wasted right now, bro. Like, all right, shut the hell up. We know. Like, I'm sure we can see it pretty easily. It's a no shit thing. Like, you're over there sweaty as hell, walking like you got some weak ass limbs, then we all know. Believe me, the whole party knows. And I don't know why people think it's a flex to be like, oh yeah, bro, I'm so gone right now. Like, come on. It really isn't that much of a flex. Like, in the morning, you're gonna feel like shit, so it's not gonna be a flex after that, is it? Now, next up, we got the party animal. Now, this kid is just the center of the party. He's the main character. He's over there in the middle of a dance circle, getting sturdy, hitting the gritty, doing whatever crazy ass dance moves he can think of. He's the life of the party. That Now, that's that kid. Everyone's getting lit, taking videos of him, recording and putting on their Snapchat stories. And this is the guy. This is Timothy Hemsworth. And they're all messing with this guy. And you know who people aren't messing with? The guy who thinks he's the main character. This dude is annoying as hell. And he just attempts to be the life of a party, but of course he just fails. He'll push people out of the way to get into the circle, and when he gets there, the vibe's already dead. It's just a desperate attempt to try to be the life at the party for attention. That's basically what this kid is in a nutshell. Like, this dude probably thinks he's got a whole ass anime arc and something in store for him in his lifetime. But yeah, I've been shoved multiple times by these kids that think they're the main character, and I'm sure it's happened to all of you too. Then next up, you got the Flaker. Now, you gotta draft this motherfucker to the Los Angeles Flakers, how much this guy's flaking. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Then he just doesn't show up. He promises he'll be there, and then he dips. And I mean, I get it. Some people have plans that come up last minute, which, you know, that's fair enough. But if you're just chilling in your room, just you just chose not to go, even though you promised your boys you'd be there, you're just a flaker. And we got an honorable mention, the Nick Fiend. If this kid's at the party, it is going to be a goddamn hot box. You're not gonna be able to breathe in there. You'll just smell the mango pod. Now, I talked about that a lot in this video right here, if you want to check it out. Click it right- School presentations. It's just something we just unfortunately have to go through. And it's gotta be up there as my, one of my least favorite things about school. Because when I got to high school and I had to start doing like pretty serious presentations, like well, only the serious ones, I was a nervous wreck. There was too much information to remember and then the teachers would always be like, hey, hey, hey the duck buddy, you can't read off the slides. Which honestly just handicapped me even more because I'm terrible on the spot. It's gotten better, but we'll start in the ninth grade. I was the most self-conscious person to walk the planet, which honestly doesn't surprise me. I'm just entering high school and I was just built like a Minecraft skeleton. So of course I just had no confidence whatsoever. I probably couldn't have done YouTube if I tried to because that that's how little confidence I had. This is probably the worst presentation I've ever given where stage fright for me was just at its peak in Mr. Jones history class. And all I had to do was just read off my note cards. But no, my body didn't let me do that. Already before I was presenting, I was over there in the back corner like the loser I am. I was shaking in my boots. My heart was racing and the moment came. The teacher called on me, guys. I don't know why it was that deep back then. In retrospect, it really wasn't that intense. Okay, great presentation on the Founding Fathers, Timmy. Um, the other day, I was talking to my wife, and, uh, you know, we were talking about how impactful the Founding Fathers were, and I was like, when we touch, it's electric. <laughs> That's a good one. All right, we'll go with Old Reliable, the bucket of popsicle sticks. Let's go right in. The duck. Fuck! I'm not ready for this. I know jack shit about the progressive era. What am I, what am I doing? I just copy and pasted everything from history.com. Shit. All right, the duck, whenever you're ready. I have a feeling this one's gonna be good. <coughs> progressive era. Progressive era was a time of <coughs> great, great progression in you know, states United, <coughs> United States history. <sighs> I'm not gonna do a skit of the whole presentation. That's how it went. That is how it went. And from that day forward, I knew there was something wrong and I had to fix it. I had no plans of being a YouTuber at this time. So I was like, wow, in the workplace, I cannot be fumbling like this. Like there was one point where I was so nervous and dry mouth where I said water like water. And then also throughout high school, I had timed presentations where if I didn't hit a certain criteria of time, we, we would just do boof. That, that's how it would go. You know, it should be quality over quantity. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. This channel right here should not be saying quality over quantity. But yeah, I would put in a lot of 
time. But yet my presentation would be so bad because I would just talk so fast because I was nervous. It was really a mixed bag with my nerves. Like one day I could be like stuttering like I'm goddamn Porky Pig up there. And then other times I actually had a decent presentation. It's like I'm flipping a coin whether my brain decides to freak out or not. Then for this other presentation, I sound like the when you have a dream kid. Yeah, dream. When you have a dream, you, you, yeah, that kid. So, you know, the, uh, the, uh, um, mm, uh, yeah. Um, then I just started panicking. I just went blank. Thank God it wasn't one of those 300 person lecture halls. But don't you all just hate it when you lose your train of thought during a presentation? Like, and it just goes silent. And then there's your dumbass trying to finish the sentence remembering what you were even gonna say. So, the, the, the Great Depression, you know, it had a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, it, it was bad. Okay, yeah, no, I that I just butched I just botched that shit. I'm I'm failing. I'm failing this presentation. Oh my god, it's so bad. This is going to be this is gonna go down in the history books as the worst presentation in this school. Okay, yeah, everyone's gonna talk about this shit at launch. God damn, please try not to do this. Everyone's gonna forget about your hiccup in like five minutes. And if they don't, then they're just petty. Half the time no one's even listening either. At least for me, I'm in another fucking world. I don't know about you guys. You could probably tell I was like the most insecure motherfucker on the planet. I didn't talk to anybody, I was quiet. Quiet, I was a mute, so presentations were my kryptonite. Yet, I run a YouTube channel. YouTube has greatly impacted my speaking skills. But it's still nothing compared to presentations and public speaking. Because you want to know why? You're in your bedroom, by yourself. So that doesn't really count at all. Then somehow, a few weeks later, I would get the grade, and it would be a B-. minus. I'm like, okay, I will take that. Let's go, no metaphorical leather belt will be touching this asshole tonight! Let's go! Like, I'd be having a celebratory drink when that presentation grade came in, and it was above a C. And in high school, as the years went on, it got better. And everything was starting to go well. Like, I was starting to become more confident. You know, I was lifting, all that stuff. And then, boom, the virus. It was basically a reset. And the rest of my presentations were online until I left high school. And skip to college, we were back where we were. I'm still pissed off about it to this day. But thank God I was in a group this time, or else it, it, just, it just wouldn't have been bad. And this time, I had a piece of paper. All I had to do was say a couple things. But of course... Yeah, I, I couldn't even do that. It was like three or four things or whatever it is, but my dumb ass couldn't even do that. And there I was looking goofy as hell, like hands trembling, shaking. You think I added like the goddamn S shake effect on myself like when I went to present. For this particular presentation, I had to dress up. It, it's a crime how drippy I was. I was looking. I was so dripped out. But the drip didn't matter. No matter how drippy I was looking, my dumb ass looked stupid because my eyes were just glued to this piece of paper the whole time. Like my knees were weak and my arms were heavy and, and of course my voice was trembly as hell. And for this little bit for the present, I only had to speak for 30 seconds to a minute. I think that's how long I spoke. Like, I don't know how I wasn't able to do that without shaking in my boots. I still got through it. The nerves just kicked my ass. But when you finish a college presentation, there is no going to sit down like, oh, you did a great job, buddy. Go sit down. No. There is still one more thing you got to do. Uh, uh, the duck. Just a second. Questions. Anybody? No. Uh, nobody? Well, I have a question. Actually, I have a question, the duck. So, we are currently in an economic recession. You know, something that you discussed thoroughly throughout your presentation. Like, what do you think the government should do to increase supply currently? Uh, um... Uh, I, I don't know. Eh, give it a shot, buddy. I really don't know. Then it would tell me, yeah, go back to your seat or whatever, but guess what? Points got taken off if you didn't answer the question. And yes, in some classes, I would get points taken off for not answering a question. Some teachers weren't like that. They weren't ops like that. They were like, oh yeah, uh, it's fine if you don't know. But, um, well, actually, uh, the duck, you're supposed to be an expert on your topic. Yeah, shut the hell up, Zachary, with your goofy buck teeth. In most of my classes, people don't really raise their hands anymore if, they, if the teacher asks, oh, any questions or whatever, which of course makes it easier for me. Then after a few months, after of my trials and tribulations of shit show presentations, I won a presentation competition. And basically, I was moving on to the next round, which means... <sighs> which I didn't give a 
like, I didn't want to present again. Like, come on. So there I was presenting in front of the head of the head of the economics department. I don't know shit about economics. I couldn't tell you what elasticity is if I had to explain it thoroughly. And thank God it wasn't me. That, but they were grilling one kid in my group with questions. I felt so bad because he was the one that presented like the specific slides. But if it was me, I would have just folded, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I would have folded. Did we win the competition? What do you think? Group was goaded, but guess what? We had to go up against sweats. And I didn't give two shits about this competition. My Nguyen channel was blowing up at the time. So I'm like, bro, bro, I gotta get home and make a video. Like, it's just too good of an opportunity to pass up on. But yeah, I was a ball of nerve for school presentations. I don't know if you were, maybe you were the confident Chad, but I was not. But just school presentations just get me. I'm good and everywhere else. If you enjoyed this video, I got you. I got another video right there that you can watch just for you. Click it right. School bathrooms. Oh my God. It's a fever dream. It really is. Y you don't know what is going to go down in the school bathroom. Like there has been a lot of weird experiences and stories I got that I'm going to compile in today's video about school bathrooms. So we all know school bathrooms are just oh, Musty hell, as hell. Man. It's not Porta John level, but it's up there. At least for my school, the janitor could come in, clean the bathroom. It'd be nice and spotless. You're practically inhaling the chemicals at this point. <sighs> fresh chemicals. So you either have option A or option B when you walk in because there's no in between. It's either p or bleach or Nick. Forgot about that one. Have y'all ever seen someone who films a TikTok in the bathroom before? I mean, I, that's probably pretty common, but it was around you know, before the virus, we'll say, hit. I'm not even sure if TikTok dances are common in the school bathrooms now, but I saw some kid dancing to that one song. It was like Travis Scott and Young Thug out west. Like that, that was like a trend in early 2020. And this kid had a little TikTok account going. So of course had to post midday, had to get that midday video out there. I don't know, personally, that is not how I want to spend my bathroom break after leaving Mr. Jones history class. I don't want to spend it doing a TikTok dance over and over again this kid had to do like a retake five times and i was just sitting there awkwardly in the stall on my phone as this kid just did like five retakes Ah, oh, that's not good enough. Retake. Now, of course, I don't know what the girls' bathroom is like, but I would assume girls are doing TikToks too. But that's around the time when, like, TikTok dances were, like, really popular. Now, everyone, I guess, is getting fresh cuts in the bathroom. Now, that is hilarious. But you know what isn't? When motherfuckers stole the soap dispensers. All right, just took a nice shit. It's time to wash my hand. Yeah, you're screwed. Then you get home in a few hours, and then you see that one kid that actually did it at your school went viral on TikTok. He got, like, 100k likes because he pulled a soap dispenser out of his backpack. Getting a fresh cut in the bathroom solos. I've heard in other YouTube videos and TikToks that there's a whole rave sometimes in the school bathroom. Like, damn, I wish I went to your school. Like, I gotta pull up to a bathroom function. It sounds like an amazing time. I'd rather turn up the whole lot of red than be in Miss Smith's English class where I learned Jack... I mean, I didn't really learn much. I'd rather have been getting turned in a school bathroom. Now, I usually don't go number two in the school bathroom that often, but when I do, I gotta go. It's like emergency level. It's like a Spice King after filming a video. And I walked in. Nothing weird happened at all. So then I go to take my sweet ass time, and you know, I was about to dip. And then I hear some kid walk in. And each step was getting louder in the okay it wasn't that intense but still brody just started knocking on the door like are you shitting in there it didn't sound like that but he kept knocking on the goddamn door and he's like pulling on the stall door trying to well pretending like he was trying to get in but like hey yo why the hell are you trying to watch me like i'm sure some of y'all have had to deal with bathroom trolls before and usually how i deal with them is i either give like a little <laughs> pretty funny man chuck that one mordecai has in regular shows <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck. Or I, I just jokingly say like, ah, shut the hell up, bro, or whatever. The bathroom trolls really be menaces out here. I was taking a leak next to this kid, and you know, thank God there was a divider because who knows what he could have been doing if there was no divider. And then all of a sudden, I'm all done. I'm washing my hands, and this kid went to the stall as I went to the sink. And once I turn the sink off, I hear this. Oh, oh okay, that's my cue to leave, and I left because wow, I'm. <laughs> How are you that down bad? Like, come on. Like, you need some serious help if you're doing that in school, bro. Come on. Like, I really got a lot of stories of bathroom trolls. Even my brother, Birdie, has one. Yo, so I hit up the bathroom one day, and I made a chronic mistake. An absolutely tragic mistake. I took in school. And at this point, I was low-key just asking for it, because who the f*** 
in school. I don't know. Apparently, I... So, I walk into the bathroom, and I see these two vapors. And they ask me if I want a hit of their blueberry or mango, whatever it is. And I say, nah, I'm good. So, I go into the stall and do my thing. And all of a sudden, they were like, oh, he's a p so he doesn't want to hit her. They're, they said something along those lines. And then they just shut the lights off. I'm like, are you f kidding me? Now, I gotta wipe my ass in the goddamn dark. Like, thanks a lot. I had to turn on a flashlight to wipe my ass. Moral of the story, don't sh in school. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you on that one. Skip to college. Somehow, my bathroom experience got worse. Yeah, you heard me right. It got worse. And the dorm bathrooms in particular. So let me tell you what a particular floor bathroom is looking like. There were showers. And you know, the showers weren't too bad. Sometimes they would be bad. Most of the time, they were good. But sometimes I would see some boogers on the wall. Like, bro, my be blowing snot rockets at like seven in the morning then one day i walk into the shower there is just pubic hair all over the floor it's like a mountain of it over the drain you know it's like a goddamn booby trap like you gotta just go to the other shower that, that's kind of how the lifestyle is if one shower just looks musty as hell there's like all over the wall or whatever you just move to the next shower and one thing i really wish i had was a loud ass jbl speaker I, I could bring to the shower and put on some like uzi or cardi that would have made my shower way more quality or sometimes i would have to shower in freezing cold water oh my god nah I mean, at least it woke me up, though. But in the winter, I just made sure that shit was warm. And sometimes kids would bring their own speakers into the showers, which honestly helped my ass stay awake, so thank you. If you're the speaker kid in the shower, you're a goat, for real. Like, I would hear some loud-ass pop smoke music, I'll just be, like, bopping my head to it. I'm out here getting sturdy. Okay, no, I wasn't out here getting sturdy, but I, I was, like, bopping my head to it. I was, like, taking a shower. Either that or I heard, like, a podcast going. Like, it was either or. Then we got the stalls. Oh my god. This, this has got to be my weirdest bathroom story of all time. Now, I have a picture of it, but I'm not going to show you guys because I don't want to ruin your day. But there was this one time I walked into the bathroom and it was like a bathroom the entire floor shared. I think I forgot to say that. Then there was like another bathroom on the other end. But I went to the my end this time. This is the usual bathroom I go to. Then I walk in, of course. First stall, I noticed there's this brown chocolate on the wall, we'll say. I wasn't really sure what it was, but since it was brown and we were in a bathroom, I was not willing to test anything. So what do I do? I take a picture because it's going to make a great story in the future. Well, maybe. But God bless the janitor that had to clean that up. And it was on the front and the two sides of the wall. So of course, I choose another stall like any rational human being. This dude had to be gone. I'm Trish. really sharing a bathroom with five-year-olds. Bro, I have to show this to Birdie. Yo, look what I just saw in the bathroom. Bro, what the f*** is that? I don't know. I didn't even want to test it. But then it's just now. I just saw this. Damn, we're functioning adults and we're really f paying for this. That's crazy. It really is crazy. You know what else is crazy? I saw a white substance. A white sticky goopy substance. Y you all, your mind went to one substance. Like, come on. So Birdie this time walked into the bathroom and I don't know if it was the same stall or not, but one day Birdie walked in the bathroom and he saw the white stain. A similar story to mine. He just laughed off, took a picture of it and sent it to me saying, what the hell is this? Like bro couldn't even clean up. He was that down bad. It was pretty disgusting and funny at the same time because of how stupid the situation is. And then sometimes you would see some hangover throw-ups or throw-ups. It, it, it's just an interesting time, we'll say. It really is a box of chocolates or whatever 40-year-old Facebook moms say. That saying really sticks here. No pun intended. Yeah, quite the fever dream. If you enjoyed this video, I got another one right there waiting for you personally on the end screen i got you high school you either thought it was booty cheeks or you loved it or you were just powering through just to get by and whatever you thought about high school we all ran into these types of kids before now this is a third part to birdies types of kids in high school series and we both brainstormed some new ones so let's just jump right in first up we got the soundcloud rapper or the rapper like this kid believes it that he can make it out the slums and most of the time the music is so trash and he's just posting it on like his snapchat story or something like yo go turn up to this new album just dropped promoting it on your snapchat story isn't it bro you gotta put more work in than that yo did you see john's story this dude just dropped a whole project i already know that shit's ass all right here goes nothing hey shout out my boys in the jam shout out the boo shout out the doody doo we spinning the block yeah yeah and we sip the wah 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 wah
All right, we're turning this shit off. I mean, in all fairness, some SoundCloud rappers might be good at your school, but let's be real, most of the time they suck, and they make whatever that was. Next up, we got the hallway athlete. Now, this motherfucker thinks he's a all-pro prospect or something, because he's, like, jumping up, touching the ceiling or, like, the door frame. He's juking kids in the hallway, when you and you bet your ass when he sees a basketball hoop, he is jumping up and touching it. We all gotta know the hallway athlete. It's just a staple throughout schools all across the world. Like, you look over over at that kid for one second he looks like he's walking and then all of a sudden all of a sudden you're a little bit too close to the the hallway athlete and the hallway is pretty crowded so what does he do he pretends like he's hitting the hole like a running back and he goes for the touchdown but if you're like right in front of each other he'll hit you with the shimmy like ooh. then we got the sleeper this one was me just something about getting up at seven in the morning it just sucked i just had no energy so of course i would sleep during class a lot to the point where kids would probably know me as the sleeper i don't know just something about that 7 a.m wake up time Time just knocked me out at the end of the day by the time like seventh period rolled around i was just slumped and of course the sleeper is pretty chill they really don't do anything they just sleep next up you got the clutch kid this kid will come in clutch with any sort of schoolwork whatsoever if you need help with the homework he's got you if you need answers he's got you the clutch kid is just a beast mr jones homework was due the next day you pull it to the class and shit you forgot to do it the clutch kid has got you bro is seriously a lifesaver and you get those answers down in t minus five minutes before mr jones Jones gets a slow ass there. And Tess? I remember letting motherfuckers cheat off me. We would get like a whole operation set up where he would either drop his pencil, pick it up, and then slowly look at my paper for answers. Or I would like get, he would like nudge me and I would like give him a hand signal for the answer, like whatever letter it was for multiple choice. It was like a whole ass sting operation because fuck school, am I right? That one motherfucker that says men or women ain't shit. <laughs> Why is this even on? They got the biggest ego on the planet and they think they are better off without a man. Basically throw up a middle finger to all men like oh yeah men suck like just because you listen to like one cardi song and you hate one guy in the school that doesn't mean all men suck and you're better off without them and that doesn't mean you're better than everyone either they need a nice dose of reality then you got the musty kid how do you smell how do you smell this bad on a tuesday morning like seriously like you could smell their body odor from like half a mile away like it's crazy like it really isn't that hard like I, i'm not gonna sit here and explain how to take a shower but dude the must is just gonna distract me mr smith's just gonna be blabbing on about about the mitochondria and my brain's just gonna be focused on the musty kid like i see some people saying like oh yeah i haven't showered in weeks like how the fuck next up you got the absent kid what does this dude do in his free time where does he go it's a serious question i don't know where he goes this guy could be like absent for like a whole month and then just show up randomly like it's different if you got something going on in your life like okay that's different but like if you're just not going to school to just not go to school then you're the absent kid i mean hey me personally i would love to be the absent kid there's nothing wrong with that one like you could just be walking into class one day and you could just see some random random NPC spawn in that you've never seen. Before. Yo, what's up, Teach? Hey, hey, Tyler, where you been? Good morning, buddy. We missed you being around. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who, who is Tyler? Wait a minute. Oh, I remember from the beginning of the year. That's right. Then you see him for that one class and he never comes back after that. And one month later, few months later he could just pop out again like polo g like these kids consistencies are like rappers dropping music the speaker kid we all know this kid this kid will be blasting like nba young boy in the hallways like like in between going to class like he's just carrying around this big ass jbl speaker with him like i'm not trying to listen to nba young boy and lil uzi vert at the same time like damn like I, I, they're both good but you know i don't need to hear them at the same time or it could be the soundcloud rapper promoting his music that would be tough like so i'm sorry but like i don't want to hear your soundcloud music at seven in the morning then you got the quiet kid now i can already see the comment section haha <laughs> school threat what comes before 47 or whatever goofy ad shit tiktok said tiktok has destroyed the quiet kid reputation but let's be honest it really all depends on how the quiet kid is carrying yourself like if you could be quiet and just be dripped out an athlete he could be like pretty involved with the school or maybe he's just a complete eugene and he's got something on him we'll just say that and i'm praying none of you come across the eugene in your lifetime then you got the ho 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 the school who will give the box to about anybody that walks. And of course, you're going to be hearing rumors about how, oh, it went down with the whole football team, the basketball team, every goddamn sports team on the block. In the goddamn state as well. Might, might as well throw that in there. It's crazy how for the streets these people are. And if you're in high school and you know this person, do not get in a relationship with them. That is a big no-no. It will end in like two weeks and, or she might cheat on you. She already has the street reputation, so don't do it. Then you got the nothing kid. This kid just sits there in the middle of 
gym class and does nothing. We all have this kid in our gym class. They just sit there and do nothing. They just watch everyone, I don't know, play football, basketball, whatever sport it is. And some units, I kind of wish I was that kid. Because fuck playing soccer. I'm not Kylian Mbappe out here. I suck balls. Hey, yo, Paul. I'm trash at soccer. Yo, duck, you a young prodigy? Yes, sir, let's go. And we fall. Like, I'll somehow end up slipping on the gym floor. It's bad. Like, you don't know how bad I want to be that kid during soccer. But I suck it up anyway. Uh, do we need another pause? The big backpack kid. I used to be this kid in middle school where I would carry this big-ass trapper keeper around the hallway. You know, the thing with the where you put all, like, your schoolwork in? It's like a little briefcase thing you carry around your shoulder. I just look so goofy. Um, well, I need to get my trapper keeper. But yeah, overall, this kid has a big backpack. Yo, no shit. I mean, I was kind of this kid in high school, too. I'm not gonna lie. I had a pretty big backpack. But now that I'm in college, I carry, like, nothing. But fuckers will be like, whose big-ass backpack is this? And then, yeah, I gotta say me. It was like a big boulder. I don't know why it was so heavy. Maybe it was, like, the brand of backpack I had. It was, like, my computer and my schoolwork. That was about it. And a lunch pots because fuck school lunch. You're If you've seen this video, you already know what I'm talking about. Next up, you got the menace. And now the menace, he's just on demon timing the entire day. Doesn't matter what time it is. Seven in the morning, he'll be on some devious ass shit. He'll be over there yoinking soap dispensers from the bathroom. Like, they could just start, like, a food fight. Like, they could just do the most to get in trouble. Like, they live in the principal's office office at that point or sometimes they did barely anything and still get in trouble the kid just gets in trouble all the time no matter what he does next up we got the instigator now this kid is just looking for a fight 24 7 bro thinks he's the top dog top g like out of nowhere you could just like be sleeping on like the school lunch table you can see some kids like ready to duke it out like yo you want to go you want to go bro you then they throw like a few slaps like nothing crazy they just instigate they start beef then we got the honorable mention that one kid that records the fight and says world star bro always recorded the most boof quality too like that shit's not ending up on world star like he's got this vlogger type of video that he wants to post a world star like it's not that intense if you enjoyed this video i got you we got another one right there on the screen waiting for you click on the holiday season a great time of the year honestly one of my favorite times of the year i'm out here getting in that christmas spirit i got my holiday drip on deck it's the season of giving what is not to love i got some story times along with a video on the types of people on christmas so the first type of person we got is the spoiled kid now the spoiled kid hates every single gift he gets that's usually how the spoiled kid operates if it's gucci he cries if it's a new ps5 he cries if it's a goddamn Lamborghini, he's gonna cry. Mommy, you didn't get me the red Lamborghini. I wanted the red one. As there's a green one out there. Obviously, this is exaggerated as hell, but you get the idea. Okay, Timmy. Are you ready to open your gifts? <gasps> it's, is it the iPhone? iPhone 14 Pro Max? Oh my god! You only got me the 12? <laughs> You guys are so poor. Oh my god. I wanted the iPhone 14 Pro Max with 200 bit Bro, shut the f- Like, hug your parents and say thank you. If you're this kid, you're a walking ill. I hope nobody who's watching this video is the spoiled kid slash ungrateful kid. Next up, we got the early decorator. Now, the early decorator is cool. But, you know, it gets annoying if they start singing Christmas songs in the middle of, like, October. But other than that, the decorations, of course, they're drippy. You know, and it is a pretty nice sight to see, seeing a drippy front lawn. Especially since- I I don't sometimes I don't take the effort to decorate until like the second week of December like sometimes I'm late as hell with it they're hyped for the holiday season it's it's a green flag it's good to see next up we got the bah humbug this is the opposite of the early decorator they hate the holidays they despise it there y'all some of y'all are probably like who uh, what basically someone who just despises the holiday season they hate christmas and new year and all that stuff and this is the person you don't want to be around during the holidays obviously like they're just gonna ruin your goddamn christmas they're over there on the couch like slamming 50 beers hey bob grab me another beer as they sit there and complain about like all the trials and tribulations they had to go through during the holiday season and they just ramble about literally everything they hate about it oh my god Target was so packed today. I don't know. Like, bro, simmer down. We get it. We don't want to hear your goofy ass story about Target. Then we got the can I open a gift early kid. I'm not going to lie. That was me, bro. I was that kid. I would beg my mom on Christmas Eve. Mom, can I open a gift early? And it would become a tradition from that day forward. I would always open a gift early on Christmas Eve. Well, not now, obviously. But during my little Timmy era. Like, I would get, like, I don't know, Pokemon, Heart Gold, Soul Silver. That, that's what it was one year. And my little ass was just jumping around for joy like oh my god and i stayed up until like two in the morning playing it now the next type on the call jimmy d 
or Mr. Beast. The Mr. Beast, I'll call it. Because this person is so generous and I love it. They will break their goddamn back for you. They will do the most for you because they love you. It's it's so wholesome. Like if you wanted a PS5 on that year, that one year the PS5 was sold out, they would probably get you one somehow. They find a way. It's crazy. Then we got the Peeger. This was all of us. Come on. Unless you're just that patient. I think I probably fit the characteristics of like half of these on the list I got written down. And the Peeker, he wants to know what is in that box. What's in it? He shakes it. He, he could poke a hole in it. You could tear off a little bit of the wrapping paper just to see what the gift looks like. Just a little bit to draw a nice conclusion. And then they do a full-on in-depth analysis of what possibly could be inside the gift. Hmm, it can't be that new Louis belt. Hmm, uh... Nah, can't be a video game too big. Ooh, it could be some new shoes, some new drip. Oh, it's the perfect size for a shoebox. Wow. This was me. I would spend hours by the trip. Well, not hours, but you know, I would spend like 30 minutes by the tree on like the 22nd or the 23rd just to try to figure out what I was getting when I was younger. Then you got the all out guy. Now this is someone you gotta have at the function. They just pull up with the drip. They go all out with the decorations. They're well in tune with the holiday spirit. And they got the drippiest attire on the planet too. Like it's crazy. Like they could pull up to the function with an ugly sweater. Like they are mad fat. Like, that's just that one guy you gotta have at the party. Then you got the Secret Santa family. Now, this is just an essential part to Christmas. Secret Santa will turn gift-giving into a goddamn game of Clue. Unless they just straight up tell you after they open it, which would defeat the purpose of Secret Santa. Hmm, who possibly could have got me that best dad ever mug? Could have been anyone. Oh shit, it, it can't be Uncle Rick. I saw him drunk on the couch last night, passed out. Wait, oh no. It could have been Aunt Anne. No, wait a minute. Ah, uh, no, or actually, wait a minute, Uncle Rick. Ricky, oh, he's not out of the picture yet. Okay, it's not that deep, but seriously, it adds that nice sense of mystery to gift giving, and it just makes it more fun. Then you got the Elf on the Shelf family. Motherfucker, oh my. This just made Christmas 10 times more annoying. I don't know how your experience was with Elf on the Shelf if you currently have one, or if you did have one, but I found that shit creepy as hell when I was a kid. And then my parents made me watch the goddamn movie and everything. He could be anywhere. He could be in your room. He could be in the goddamn bathroom. Like, anywhere. It truly was a mystery where the elf on the shelf is going to be. One day I woke up in the middle of the night. I, I was hungry, so I went to go get a midnight snack. And then as soon as I wake up, I see the damn thing just staring right at me. And I fucking freak the hell out. My little second grader ass was scared to death. But yeah, it's another Christmas tradition. Yeah, my family participated in, sadly. I definitely could have went without that one. The detective, or the spire. This just ruins the mystery around Christmas, bro. Like, why would you try to spy? Okay, I don't know. I, I kind of poked holes in gifts, so I can't really talk. But if you're spying on what your parents or your relatives get you for Christmas, that's just crazy. Like, there'd be some motherfuckers just tracking their order history on Amazon. They log into the account Count and then they find out what they're getting. Or they just snoop around the house, look in every single Target, Walmart, toy store bag they can find. Then they somehow find like their parents' secret bunker where they hide all their Christmas gifts for little Timmy. Still, to this day, I have no idea where my parents hid the gifts. And at this point, that you're just putting in too much effort. Personally, I don't want to be that guy that acts like finding out what he gets for Christmas is like a goddamn Sherlock Holmes mission. Next up, we got the early bird. The differences between the early gift kit and the early bird kid is the early bird will get up at like goddamn five in the morning. And of course, I think we were all the early bird at some point. The Christmas adrenaline just kicks in for some reason at six in the morning. You just get hyped up. <laughs> Mom, mother, father, kiss, now, mom, dad, gift, 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 gift. Give me like five minutes, Timmy. Tim, Tim. Dad, <laughs> I'm just grabbing a kind of coffee. That's how it went for everybody. It just cracks me up just thinking about it. I'm sure we can all relate to that one. Then you got the coal kid. Now, obviously, the kid wouldn't get coal in his stocking, but or maybe some families might be brazy like that. But the coal kid, he was so bad to the point he got nothing for Christmas. Like for the season of giving, that just sounds depressing as hell, bro. No gifts to be given and no getting gifts like that. Ooh, that, that must sting. But sometimes people like the spoiled kid deserve it. But the spoiled kid gets gifts.
gifts no matter what, because guess why? His parents are loaded. But I guess this one would make a great Darman life lesson learning moment. I don't know. I don't even know if people even experience this one. Then you got the Caroler. They love Christmas music. They will be playing it in October. It's crazy. Like, you know, it gets it gets a little bit repetitive once you, you're, you know, you're pushing that October line. After like a month, month and a half, I, I get pretty sick of it. I get sick of that one Mariah Carey song that always comes on on like music choice. Like, you know, when I hear it during the holiday season, bro, I'm getting groovy. I'm not gonna lie, but, but after three months, I would probably get annoyed. I don't know if you, any of y'all have done Christmas caroling before where you go door to door and you just sing. Maybe you have done it. Maybe you haven't. If you enjoyed this video, I got you. I got another video right there on the end screen that you can watch. Go watch it right now. TikTok slash Gen Z slang. Some of it is good and some of it is just annoying. And of course, new slang is going to be created as the years go on. Some slang is going to die out and some words are here to stay. And if the slang is trash, then unfortunately, we're going to have to accept it because humans like things that are new. And as soon as a word or slang gets old, we just leave it out to rot. That's just how the internet works. Like when's the last time you heard someone say ye, not that ye, but ye. Or he needs some milk. What are those? Like some sl slang is just bound to die. Like if it gets too mainstream to a point where the news, for example, is saying it like, oh guys, we need to hit the dab now. That's the new trend or whatever. I don't know. Like that made me want to stop dabbing in 2015. That was the big motive for me, at least for me. But I have a list of new Gen Z words from like 2022 or, or kind of recent. I'm gonna go through all the words and rank them. So why not start with the one that I'm seeing the most now, Ohio. So if someone sees something strange they'll say something like most normal kid in ohio if they see some weird kid i don't know for example it's like some kid naruto running down the hallway while screaming or something i am the master okage yeah bros from ohio most normal ohio only in students. ohio are we in ohio right now people showed really weird footage or clips on tiktok and put like only in ohio or some shit or like you can't have shit in ohio or whatever i don't know c tier next up we got riz now i see a couple youtube comments asking me what the hell is riz it's basically your ability or your charm when speaking to a girl or a guy. And then now there's like a bunch of different sayings with Riz, like negative Riz, the Rizzler, the Washington Rizzards, or whatever the hell. Like, I like the term Riz. Like, it's getting an A tier for me. And the reason why it's not an S tier is because there's some people that just overuse it. Or they don't even know what it is. Like, I could be talking to a girl about, like, the fucking homework from last night. Like, it could be anything. It could be, like, some shenanigans that went down in class. Maybe we both saw the Naruto kid running down the hallway. And then you see this kid down the hall that thinks you're trying to riz up every girl you talk to. Yo, W Riz, bro. Yo, is that the Riz Wizard of Oz? This dude plays Riz 101 in his spare time. in the time. studio later. Like, if I'm talking to a girl, that doesn't mean I'm rizzing her up all the time. Like, damn. Next up, we got Munch. And now I'm not even certain on what the hell this means. All I know is people started saying it after an Ice Spice song. Maybe people said it before. I have no idea. But chances are it was after. I don't want to hear it, man. Ice Spice is better than Beethoven. Now, but seriously, what the hell does Munch even mean? My guess is just someone who's down bad someone who's just in the trenches i don't i don't know c tier i don't know what the hell it means then we got slay now i don't know i'm not really the biggest fan of this one i'm not over here saying it 24 7 but it basically means like go off or something or pop off it's kind of like the phrase pop off queen or something i don't know like it's a means like you're going off you're doing a great job d tier then you got menace which is honestly self-explanatory someone who's just devious that one kid that wears the black air forces to school and listens to nba young boy that is the menace right there you already know the this kid was partaking in the bathroom heist and he's just up to shenanigans overall in school now that's what you call the menace i don't know everyone just started saying it on tiktok we're going b tier then we got ratio oh my god these mother this term should never be said in real life and if you do say it in real life Oh my god. Like, I swear, there'd be some kids, like, trying to ratio each other in real life. Like, bro, what are you doing, bro? Like, the teacher will be talking about ratios, like, the the, ma the actual math ratios. All right, class, today we're going to be talking about ratios. Counter ratio. What are you talking about? You said we're talking about ratios. Counter ratio plus your mother is fat. Bozo. Get packed. What are you doing, bro? This bro isn't really the internet. This is on Twitter Tell right this kid now. to That's shut crazy. the fuck up. Do people do that still? So if I were to want to ratio someone, I reply to their comments to get more likes and apparently I would own them quote-unquote if I ratioed them C tier. NPC, which is used to describe someone that's a bot. It's basically like a non-playable character in a video game. They act to really pull up the ass-ish if you if you feel me. They'd say some shit like 
Good morning. It is a great day to be alive or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty self-explanatory. It's basically, you, they just sound like a video game NPC. That's it. And then they have the same dialogue to the point you would think, oh, is this person like a video game character or something? Yeah, it's basically your day-to-day -day interaction with someone is the same, like every day. So I'm an NPC and this is the part that really describes me. I just fucking stare into space and I just look like a, a NPC. I just look like I'm ready, waiting for a fucking Pokemon battle as I'm staring off into the distance. I'm gonna give this one B tier. It's a little bit overused, but not too bad. Then we got bro thinks he's blank, bro this, bro that. I don't know where the hell this phrase came from, but low key, I'm fucking with it. I'm guilty of saying this one all the time. I don't know if this even counts, but fuck it. I see it all the time on TikTok. It's kind of like a replacement term for this dude. Like if someone was acting like a vampire in class, some kid would probably say bro thinks he's Cardi. A tier. Next up, we got smoking that blank pack. Smoking on that pack. Getting packed. Oh, hold on. This basically means means you own them. So when this cupcake eater got exposed, we were all smoking on that EDP pack. Like the internet destroyed this dude's career as he waddled away back to his car. So let's say, I don't know, the Chargers choked last night. So Jaguars would be smoking on that Chargers pack. I don't know how the fuck that S tier. Next we got Rip Bozo. Now this term's booty cheeks. I don't like it. Some kid could say like his loved one passed away and some toxic kid on TikTok would be over there like, Rip Bozo. Like TikTok seriously ruined the term Bozo. Like, like fuck out of here with your Rip Bozo. I bet some people don't even know what bozo means. They just say it because everyone else is saying it on TikTok. This one's said by like a bunch of edge lords on the internet. And that's like toxic as possible in the comment section. This saying blows ass, F tier. Period. Another, yeah, this saying's definitely another F tier. I don't I've never said this one in my life before. I really don't get the point to period. Because some kid could just say, like, God damn, I just blew up that bathroom. Period. Like, what? I don't know. It's either emphasis or ending a discussion i would yeah i'm guessing i don't know i'm not really fucking with this one that much to me it just doesn't feel right like i'm hungry period like i don't know i don't think this one will ever grow on me so we're, we're just gonna have to place that one in the f tier real quick then next we got goaded i fucking love this one this is automatically an s tier like if you say something is goaded like that, that's when you know that's when you know something is good like i could say like youtube videos are goaded or like if someone is good at a video game someone would say like they're goaded on the sticks or something i don't know although tom brady's acting sus on the timeline he's a goat or something i don't know this dude needs to be nerfed like seriously like someone's got to put a stop to this w l and mid i'm gonna put them all in one category w means good or winning l means bad or losing and then you could put like the w or the l in front of like someone's name or like an object or something lop wart and lop lart and then of course you'd say w if you you know if you fuck with someone and then you say l if you think the person's like garbage or whatever that's basically how the terminology is used on the internet and then mid is basically to describe Subscribe, food, music, movies, etc. Instead of saying like, eh, that was alright, you'd say, yeah, that shit was mid. Meaning like, in the middle. Or it can mean like, awful. Like, certified boy lover was mid. Or honestly, never mind was mid. Then you got drip. This term, ugh, it got ruined. So I was hanging out with the gang, and we saw this commercial come on for the game. And it said, the drip is in the details. And we were like, what? the hell? It seemed really out of place. It just felt really weird. I mean, in the next 10, 20 years, it's probably gonna be a normal thing, but it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to, we'll say. But overall, I love the term drip. A tier. Ah, <sighs> don't even get me started on this one. Sus. Now, this term used to be good until... Yeah. Until Among Us came out. I used to say it a lot in, like, 2018. And now every time I say the word sus, all I can think of is sussy baka, or whatever the... Or that stupid ad video of the Among Us characters dancing on stage. D tier. Then I got an honorable mention, vibes, vibing. S tier. Do I even have to explain myself? It's S tier. But if you enjoy this video, I got you. I got another one right there for you on the end screen. Go watch. Sorry, little bro. I messed up. We gotta go bald. Ooh, that's tough. tough bean. That's crazy. He's gotta go bald. I love you, hair. Getting a haircut. If you're walking in a barber shop for the first time, you are playing Russian roulette with your hair. But after that, it gets better. When they finally get to know you, then they get an idea of what you want with the cut. But you know, I'm sure haircuts overall for all of us have been pretty smooth. But I'm sure we all have that one bad experience with haircut where you got scammed and it was just a crime to pay. Like, why am I even paying right now? Like, I'm not, pay I'm not trying to pay to look like Mr. Clean or that dude from Star Trek. And then some people who give bad haircuts have the audacity to ask, 
How do you like it? Like, mother, what do you think? Oh, yeah, man. I loved it. Like, no, we obviously hated it. Y yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's awesome, man. Eh, 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 I got you crying tears of joy, man. I love to see it. Like, that's one of the hardest things to do. Say that you don't like your haircut to the person who cut your hair. If you've ever done that, seriously, props to you. And you know what's even more brave? Going to school with the f***ed up cut. Like, you're about to get your ass flame. There's no running away from it because there's all those teachers that are like, Um, Timothy, you cannot wear a hat in school. Like, shut the hell up. Then you finally muster up the courage to walk into the building, step into the room. Then the entire class just stares at you. As the as you have this goofy ass haircut on your head, or maybe you won't even have hair. That moment right there is just tough. That's probably one of the most embarrassing things that could happen to you in school. Bad haircuts can seriously assassinate your social life for the time being. Just because your barber decided to sh the bed that day, and then your homies will come up to you and be like, "Ooh, bro, what happened?" Hey, Mr. Clean looking at. I don't want to talk about it. Your barber sucks, bro. I would have ran. Yeah, we can all relate to that. So I have three specific experiences where the cut just got messed up. So I was in the second grade. All right, I was a little Timmy. And I pulled up to a shop. Obviously, I'm not going to name drop them. I'll come up with a fake name. We'll go with the G's Cuts. I don't know. But my second grader ass walks in. And I see a basket of lollipops on the counter. <laughs> lollipop, lollipop. No, no, not until you get your hair cut, honey. And I made that little spoiled kid pouty face like <laughs> so when we got in I, this was my first time going and the array of barbers the characters i had to choose from were ah uh, they, they weren't good there's one dude smoking a ciggy there was some mean looking old lady with like i don't know what was going on with her hair but it, it looked wacky she had like a little wacky haircut going and then you also had a guy with an eye patch the whole crew wasn't looking like that but you know there was some some characters in there you didn't want to get, we'll say. So I ended up getting the lady with the wacky haircut, and then I saw Birdie on the other end with the dude in the eye patch. That's so tough. And the lady asked me, So, honey, what do what, what you want to do with your hair? And obviously, I was not up to speed on the haircut language. So I just pointed at a comb over. And I wouldn't be telling this story if they didn't. Fuck it up. Ding, ding, ding. You got it. All they had to do was line me up, and they couldn't even do that. My hairline looked so scuffed. It was unbelievable. And I got a McDonald's hairline. Oh my god, it was bad. It looked like Nick Avocado's cut, but shorter and flatter. And let's just say it did not look fresh. It did not look lined up whatsoever. Now, of course, I'm not going to expect to be lined up in fucking second grade. That shit, it was just circular with a little peak in it. Like, it was cheeks. So there's my stupid ass with my goddamn lollipop. Like, I had no style whatsoever. And then I saw Birdie's cut, and yeesh. It was pretty bad. His hairline looks something like this. Me and Birdie got done dirty. Like, we weren't really rocking with G's cuts that much, but we kind of just went there anyway for about a year. And the thing about G's cuts is, well, it was already on its last legs. The business was about to close down, so we had no other spot to get a haircut. We had no idea where the hell to go next. So we went to my grandmother. And why? Well, she used to be a hairstylist back in the day. But this story is very embarrassing for me. But I'm telling it. So my grandmother asked me and Birdie, oh, do you guys want to get a haircut? And of course, we both agreed. We went down the stairs into the basement and boom, there's already like this setup and everything down there with like this chair. There's a mirror on the wall and everything. And then she had like every goddamn level of sheer. Like she was serious with it. You know, I'm not going to dis my grandmother, but I am gonna diss myself. Because guess what? She asked, oh, what do you what do you want to do with your hair? And my dumbass said, I want a mohawk. A mohawk! I don't know why I said a mohawk. I really wanted to be the hog rider out here or some shit. And of course she agreed since I was a spoiled third grader. So she cut it and I looked like the hog rider. Hog rider! Yeah, that, that's what it looked like. That is girl repellent right there. And apparently my third grader ass thought a mohawk would be cool. And of course, no, I just looked goofy. So then my parents got there. They were ready to pick me up from a long day. And yeah, let's say things did not go well. And let's just say we messed up and we had to go bald. And I cried. I was whining, crying. Like, ah, stop. And I was 
practically bald. And of course, I instantly put a hat on because I'm just not rocking with the look. So I would wear a hat everywhere, even in the pool, even when I went to sleep. Like, bro, it was crazy. First time going bald really hit different for me. And it gets worse, by the way. All right, the family function never forgets. This is always brought up at every single function I pull up to. If it was like a graduation party for me, for example, like if the event is surrounding me, then the chances are much greater of it being brought up. And everyone Everyone loves this story for some reason because it's told at like almost every family function when they reminisce on how much of a stupid child I was. Hey kiddo, remember that one time you got a mohawk? <laughs> Oh yeah, that was a great time. He just cried and cried and cried. Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember the, I was the one who shaved his head. <laughs> it really was tough beans. Like I'm out here getting violated like crazy. Like I don't know what to do in that situation when I just like awkwardly laugh like, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I was uh really dumb, man. So yeah, that was a pretty interesting time. And from that day forward, I no longer chose what I got for my haircut until I was older. And thank God I didn't have to go to school school because it was the summertime that would have been uh, it would have been a rough day for me then after that little shit show of me going bald we ended up going to walmart for something this was around the time mario galaxy 2 dropped and i whined like a little bitch for it and i got it which i guess it that might have been payment for my hair getting fucked up which you know what it was worth it that game is goaded i don't even care and my hair grew back in like a few weeks and i found a new shop and i still go to the same one to this day we've been chilling but not so much my cousin on this particular day last year. His barber must have been shwasted or something. This dude was definitely cracking a cold one while he was giving him his cut because it was just disproportionate as shit. Do not go to the big cuts are us or whatever. I'm gonna make up a new place. From that day forward, I knew not to go. To stay the hell away from the big cuts are us all across the world. So he called up me and Birdie and he asked for an honest opinion on his cut. And of course we tell him it's a crime what the barber just did to you. I don't know how how this dude got employed, but somehow he did. Clearly, he sucks ass at cutting hair. Literally, everyone said something to him that day. And I was at the grocery store that I used to work at, and I saw him. And seeing it in person, I was just shocked. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It is the most unfortunate thing that can happen to a human being. The most unlucky thing. If you enjoyed this video, I got another one right there for you. Just for you to watch. Yo, I got you. Click on the video right Dreams are a really weird phenomenon. The average person could just go to sleep and it could just be a complete mystery if you even have a dream for that night or what the hell possibly your brain's gonna think of. And if it's even gonna create that like this weird plot line that you somehow believe, it's gotta be one of the most interesting things that I've always wanted to know more about in my life. And now there's some dreams that really scarred me for life or just, I was just shook when I woke up after them. And the fact that I still remember some of these this day is crazy. Now, some of the most common dreams that you could probably have are like being chased, falling, being stuck, being late. Then you'd wake up like the house is on fire. Like, oh, 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 oh. I mean, sometimes I'm able to crack down on it that it's a dream and then I finally wake up. But sometimes my brain just acts like it's a completely normal day in the life of the duck. Some people believe that dreams have like some sort of purpose. Like they portray thoughts, emotions, feelings. But I've always had the weirdest dreams about being late to appointments, classes. Like I could be going to the dentist or something. Like there's an actual fee if you're late. It's crazy. So I have dreams where I'm like in a fucking maze and I can't find my way out. I can't find my my way to the dentist this was like one dream in particular so i once i got out of the maze there was like this big ass hill i opened a door and there was like a big ass fucking mountain like i wouldn't get anywhere i wouldn't get any progress and i had to like adventure down the hill like i was super mario like i started barrel rolling down the hill then i spawned in a car and just started zooming still i didn't get anywhere then i realized it was a dream what the and of course, I look at the time as soon as I get on my phone because, well, the whole point of that dream was don't be late, I guess. Have you guys ever had those dreams where you feel like you're being tased when you wake up? It is honestly one of the scariest things. It happened to me like five or six times. But in this particular dream, it was a horror dream. It was a nightmare. I was in probably 
fourth or fifth grade. And at the time, me and my friends would often play manhunt in the woods. The woods extended pretty far, and we usually play during the day, but this time it was at night, and we all had our flashlights. And of course, since it's a nightmare, I had to go first, and everybody else had to find me. Usually you can see my friend's house from where I was in the woods, but you couldn't this time. And it's like they, ex it, the woods extended almost. Like it was like a much larger area than it actually was. Like you could see my friend's house from the area. Which, which, of course, my brain's not gonna pick up on that while I'm dreaming. And we keep going further and further, because guess what? It's like you're a horror movie character. You're, like, fucking stupid. It's almost like they were doing it on purpose. Kind of like this dream. So I was hiding, and in the dream, I thought it for, was, like, for probably an hour. So then I think I won, obviously. Then I get out of my spot, which I was just hiding behind this big-ass rock. And I was like, guys? Hello? No answer. And then that's when the heart started racing, like, boop, 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 boop. no answer from the homies really got me shook. And it was, yes, it was almost like my brain was thinking of this plot, like the plot of a horror movie. My brain was like, you know what? The duck, fuck you. We're going to be an op tonight. So there I was, no one in sight. No one can even hear me. Then all of a sudden, I hear this, like, sort of rustling. I honestly thought they heard me. So, of course, I turned around, and ah, nothing was there. You, th you thought there was going to be some monster, right? Somehow, this dream continues. So, obviously, I leave my spot, and I continue to look for my friends and it was just more and more woods as i kept looking for them and then i like hear these weird um, voices uh, it was almost like it was like distorted in a way then it gets louder and louder as i walk towards it then all of a sudden there was like this weird treasure chest in the middle of the woods i'm like shit i guess i just struck gold we were getting that paper and then i look down to open it like i can't see my surroundings for some reason all i can see is just the treasure chest and i look up and then i see this weird ass monster and then i just start hauling ass the other way fuck the treasure chest at that point all right i just started running and running and then all of a sudden there was like this little pothole and then i just slipped and the monster i guess just magically teleported because like it was right behind me and then i couldn't move like i don't know why in dreams all the time you just can't move for some reason and then it was about to attack me and then i woke up and i just started fucking vibrating like i was being tased well at least it felt like my whole body was vibrating i don't know if you any of you could relate to that but it is honestly one of the weirdest types of dreams i've ever had then this next dream honestly <laughs> was just really weird it wasn't like a nightmare but it all started with a fire me my parents and birdie were outside having a fire this wasn't a part of the dream yet i just need to give some backstory then we end the fire just keep this in mind so then i go to bed like a few hours later then i went to sleep so i had this dream i was at a water park and i was sitting by the pool it was like this indoor water park it wasn't like one of those sweaty ass water parks where you could barely fucking breathe in it no it was just like an outdoor water park but it was like with shade basically and then one of my friends offers me that gas that za i've never done any devil's lettuce activities believe it or not even though i'm a stickman youtuber and it was like i was inhaling smoke i'm like it just felt real i felt like really relaxed and colors got brighter and i kept going i kept getting more rounds of the the yodi land device then all of a sudden i felt like really dizzy and i went to go use the water slide even though i wasn't really that far into yodi land it was like a light blue slide and as i went down the slide like the colors were changing and it was like really vibrant and i would see like random images and thoughts like it was it was honestly crazy and i still felt like i was inhaling smoke even though i wasn't hitting the yodi land device and then as soon as i went underwater and got off the slide i woke up and as soon as i woke up i i still felt like there was smoke in my lungs i'm like what what is going on dude i thought i was like there was some something wrong then i realized it kind of smells like the after effect of a fire in my room. It just smells really smoky. And then I check my window and it's open. My dumbass left the window open. It just let all that smoke in. And my room was basically the equivalent of a hot box for the morning and extremely cold at the same time. And then that whole morning, I felt like there was smoke in my lungs and I could just smell the after effect of a fire. I just smelt like it. And I hit the shower as soon as I woke up. Then sometimes you could have the most random dreams on the planet. Like it is honestly so so weird how your brain comes up with the stuff this one night i had a dream where i was with my friend all right it was a completely different friend from the yodi land dream then we were like on this adventure like we were a video game character and there were like npcs that would come up to us and give us tasks and i think the issue at the time was yeah hello you're playing too much pokemon like i would play for like five six hours a day i would stare at that little ass ds screen so me and 
my friend, were the only ones that weren't NPCs. So we went up to this one guy, and he said, there's something that awaits you at your old basketball court. You might want to check it out. Then, of course, we went, we started driving, and then I just started seeing weird-looking, largely-sized animals. And there were just NPCs just walking around. Then I finally make it to the basketball court, and there was this big thing. I don't even know what it was. It was like this big frog-looking thing, and I had to fight it. But then I realized, of course, I have no Pokemon. And you would think the thing attacked me, but no, it just stood there. I'm like, <laughs> I was so confused, but we ran away. It was like an actual Pokemon battle. Then this like weird, I don't know, this weird professor looking dude comes up to us. And he gives me this level 100 Infernape. And we ended up catching the frog. What the hell? And that's what happens when you play too much Pokemon. But yeah, when I was younger, I wa would watch this like series about like what Pokemon would look like in real life. Maybe that's why I had this like vivid dream. If you enjoyed this video, I got you. We got another one right there just for you on the end screen. Go watch it that. I'm back, and I brought the milk. Oh, yeah, I'll also explain where the fuck I've been at the end of the video. Basically, today, what I'm going to be doing is posting a bonus video for the duck. And what I'm going to do is post one last hurrah for the duck, and that's it. And I'm going to do a voice reveal, where I just essentially reveal that it's me. So, as you all know, I went undercover as a PNG tuber on TikTok, and I made an account called It's the Duck 5, and it worked. Also, a few updates. I blew past 500 followers, so, I mean, I really don't have to keep posting till I hit it. The account's now 2,000 followers. Everyone went to go follow it from the video. And due to everyone following, liking, commenting on all my videos, it, it pushed out the videos more. But yeah, before we get in, consider subbing. Without further ado, let's jump in. So I just got done editing and recording the very last The Duck video, and now I'm never gonna see this Greg Heffley looking duck again, man. I'm in tears. Minecraft, but I voice reveal. As you all know, I use text to speech in my videos, and in honor of recently hitting 1,000 followers, thank you all, by the way, The Duck will do a voice reveal. What's up guys, The Duck here. This isn't even a real PNG tuber. I went undercover on this account as a PNG tuber for seven days. If you want to see the video, link it by it. That's really all I did. I didn't really expect much from the video because everyone fucking knew it was me at this point. Like everyone going to the account, they knew it was me. So I really didn't expect much view wise, but I ended up getting 11,000 views. And it's probably still going to go up because the original video is blowing the fuck up right now. Thank you guys so much for that, by the way. So we're going to read some comments and I I was shocked when I saw these. People want me to stay on this account. There are some people in the comments that want me to keep posting. Don't quit, please. Please keep making the content regardless. This level of satire is something I dearly missed on the internet. Wait, is that really something people want? Like, I, I didn't really think people liked it, but, uh, I guess not. But I guess maybe I'll make another The Duck video if you really want me to. Like, I mean, I didn't really think anyone liked it. I mean, it was literally just a duck with a text-to-speech voice. And, you know, the art, I mean, it looks like a drunk uncle whip that shit up in MS Paint. I mean, all I did was read comments in a text-to-speech voice. I thought it was pretty bland. I mean, I guess I'll post more. I got inspired. Well, don't be surprised if you see any more satire PNG tubers with a text-to-speech bot roaming around because, uh, apparently the duck has influenced people. But somehow a duck with a Greg Heffley haircut that looks like it could be listed on OpenSea as a shitty NFT can inspire people. You know what? I'm very glad I inspire you, whoever this is. Duck solos. Yeah, honestly, fuck that end green guy, the duck solos. SMH, another PNG tuber has a hot real voice, and now everyone is on his side. Yo, I got simps, bro? An end green simp caught lacking in the comments, question mark? But, uh, thank you? I really don't know how to respond to this, to be honest. So someone named It's the Duck 5 Fangirl duetted one of my videos. Or sorry, at mentioned me, but I have a fucking fangirl account already. The Duck has 2,000 followers and literally just got off the fucking ground like a couple days ago and I already have a fangirl account, bro. What What is going on? Hi guys, it's me, the Duck's number one fangirl. I am a new PNG tuber. Please comment any questions if you want to be in my next video. Bye bye, love, stay safe, and have a good day or night. Tag swag, are you okay? People think it's tag swag, no fucking- Okay, it's not him, I can confirm it right now. I don't know who the fuck this is, but uh, they, they kind of just made some fan account like simping for me. I don't know, it's probably a troll, but still, it's, I think it's pretty funny. Goofy Ah uh, Uncle Productions. I want to take a pic with Cardi B inside my card again. Goofy Ah uh, Uncle Production, Quandale Dingleus Bingleus the third. All right, this is definitely a fucking troll. That basically confirms it right there with that video. Wow, everyone loves the duck, man. People want him to stay. There's fangirl accounts of the duck, and people are actually following the duck. And someone already made fan art of the duck. Don't worry, it's not inappropriate. None, none like that. 
It's a nice little drawing of the duck. And also got some more fan art here with some nice expressions of the duck. You know, I think it looks pretty good, especially compared to my disaster I drew in MS Paint. But I got fan art, bro, and I guess I'll make that my next The Duck video. Thank you guys for the fan art. I appreciate it. Never imagined this day where the duck would be getting fan art. That that's crazy to me. Now I will put a bunch of comments on screen from you guys as I explain where the fuck I've been. So as you all know, I've took a two-month hiatus on this channel. Now, that is quite some time. You know, I really went to get the milk. I'm back now. I got my milk, and I'll probably be uploading more this summer on this channel. Maybe once a week, maybe once every two weeks. Not really sure on the upload schedule yet, but, you know, I guess I'll see what flows well. And I mean, school kind of kicked my ass. Actually, no, not kind of. Like, that shit kicked my ass. And I really didn't have time for a second channel. Either that, or I'm just fucking lazy. I really don't know, but, you know, I just got really busy with school, and that kind of got in the way. But, you know, I want to have two channels just in case my main channel gets fucked and, um, you know, I, I got terminated or something, so it's always nice to have a second channel, so I'll start uploading on here. But yeah, thank you all for the supportive comments. Even, like, you guys even went to the Duck account and left supportive comments. Like, I, I, I truly appreciate it. Anyways, that's gonna end the video, and yeah, I'm out. Bye. The people have spoken. Gen Z slang part two. I gotta deliver. I've got a whole new list of words to rank, and some of these on the list were unfortunately ruined by TikTok, but it is what it is. If it's popular, it's gonna be said. It's just inevitable, and it'll die out like the word Beckfist. Like, seriously, who says that anymore? But yeah, let's jump right in, and we'll start with understood the assignment. We're starting off with a bad one. This saying is booty cheeks, bro. Plain and simple. It just doesn't sound right to me. I don't know, but it basically means someone has gone above and beyond. Like, let's say, um, Lil Billy hit a home run, so Lil Billy understood the assignment. <sighs> F tier. Next up, we got main character. Hey, I love this saying. I'm not gonna lie. It's really a perfect way to describe someone that's full of themselves or they think their whole life's a fucking Netflix series. Anyone who gets called the main character or has main character syndrome thinks they're the shit. So people could be at like a party or something and some kid could just show up and for no reason, this main character guy could just on him. Bro, who are you, dude? You're actual NPC. What the fuck are you doing at my party? Nah, I'm staying, bro. Your homie was the one who invited me. Bro, this is my party. Get the f*** out of here. Like, you're gonna scare all the girls away. Hey, I'm the host, dude. This is my party. Damn, I didn't know you had a whole anime arc in the store. You gotta get the f*** out of here. I'm the life of the party, bro. So back off, little bro. Capiche? Yeah, these are the type of people that call people NPCs for no reason at all. Main character, I like the saying, but obviously the main character is a piece of shit. So we're gonna go a nice solid A tier. Next up, we got him, Himothy, Himmy Neutron, the Himsons. That's when the whole family's him. And this is basically the opposite of the main character. You are that guy. For example, my boy Jimmy D is him. He's got over 100 million subs on YouTube. Or you could say Petty Mahomes and the whole Chiefs roster, they're the Himpsons. Okay, I've never heard anyone say that one before, but hey, if you want to start using it, go ahead. We're gonna give him an S tier. Plain and simple, it's just goaded. Then you got Who Asked. Who asked for this video and they're recommended? Who asked this and who asked that? I don't know. It, it's really, it's gotten ruined by TikTok. They just say it for basically about everything, which of course is gonna happen for popular slang. Yo, yo, I went to the mall yesterday and guess what, bro? I saw the crazy there. There was a whole Karen freak out. I got it on recording too. Who asked, bro? Oh, come on. You really don't want to see it? Like, that's not something that happens every day. Hey, man, you're just missing out. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, there's like some people on TikTok that just say it to just look or something. I don't know. They will comment it on basically any video. It doesn't matter. It could be like some hustle Sigma grind set video like how to be a millionaire in 3.5 years. Stop. You're gonna want to watch this. Who asked? They'll comment it. Who doesn't? It doesn't matter. Or I don't know. Dog goes wild over Super Bowl commercial. Who asked? That's it. All right, they're just dry, boring, because they, they don't, they're not interested in other people's, you know, what other people are saying, doing, or what's going on in their life. D tier. It was good until it was overused on TikTok. Next, we got Goofy Ah, or Goofy Ah. Not really sure how this one started, but I did hear a lot of people saying it after that one Quandale Dingle meme last year. And basically, it's used to describe anyone who acts like a goddamn cartoon character, like, or they just do anything goofy. Like, if someone's running like they're in a cartoon, like Drake, for example, you know, Drake's got a Goofy Ah run or something. I don't know. You, you know what goofy means. I don't got to sit here and describe what the hell it means. So let's say like I throw a football and it's like the dumbest form imagined. And then I would have goofy F form. There you go. We'll go B tier for this one. Then you got it's giving. Uh, I don't know. It's more of like a shortened kind of phrase to it's giving this sort of vibe. I don't know. This is giving me main character vibes versus it's giving main character. 
huh? I don't really get the point of this one. It really doesn't make sense either. Anyone new to the saying won't really get it. Like if I saw that for the first time and didn't know what that was, I probably would think they just suck at typing. Like, and why not just say the full thing? But I don't, I don't get it. D tier. Next up, we got let them cook, bro. I fucking let love this cook. saying. All right. In my opinion, this is the better version of slay. Like someone could be hooping up on the basketball court. He could have like 20 points, like 10 rebounds and like five assists. And he's like, cook it up. Oh, damn, the crossover. That boy was on skates. Yo, did you see that? My boy Lone is cooking out there. Hey, coach, let him cook. Hey, coach, put me in. I'm cooking up. And boom, he scores 40 points, wins the game. He just cooked up. Nothing is better than a bomb-ass meal. So in a saying, that's just S tier. Like he's whipping up a meal. Next up, we got I'm weak or I'm dead with the skull emoji. We're going to mix things up with this one. We're going to add an emoji in there. How the hell is this a laughing emoji? I don't know. Yeah, really don't know how this one started, but I'm assuming TikTok. Well, I, now I just got a text with the skull emoji in it, and it's it's a laughing emoji. It basically is the new laughing emoji at this point. Difference is, you are on the floor dead. There is a huge difference, like, the, to the point where you can't even breathe when you're laughing. You know, at that point, you are weak. We'll go B tier with this one. Next up, we got bussin', and I guess this is used to describe good food. Now, this is my parents cooking, I'm not gonna lie. It's bussin'. Nothing hits more different than a home-cooked meal after a long day. Like, <clears throat> it slaps. It really gets me hyped up. I could literally go to the gym, then go upstairs and record a video. That's how much energy and life the home cooked meals give me. Bussin, it gets an A tier for me. Just all the beautiful meals I think of. I don't really say it a lot. It would get S, but I don't say it a lot. Then we got skill issue. A lot of you said this one in the comments section that I forgot it in the last video and everyone and their mother is saying it in your school. I'm gonna have to use Google for this one, but I'm assuming it's like a lack of skill at something like at a game or like, I don't know. It's everyone's using it for everyday life situations now. I guess it's a way of saying your booty cheeks at a game. Maybe. C tier? I'm just gonna go with C tier. We gotta fill up the C tier. Then you got catch these hands. Now I can imagine this being said in a school locker room. There's some beef going down with Brad and Chad. And there's like a whole fight that breaks out. Hey, little bro, I heard you slept with my girl. You gotta catch these hands. And yeah, beef. It, it just beef everywhere. And basically, of course, it means you're, you're just gonna catch some goddamn punches punches are gonna be thrown your way. Me personally, I like the saying, you know what, we'll, we'll go with a nice solid B tier. It rolls off the tongue. Then we got Stan. Now this one is like an overly obsessed fan of like a music artist, a content creator, or like a TV show, an actor. Mostly stands that I see are music artists, actors, and dream. So for example, Playboy Cardi Stan. Like I fuck with Cardi music. Heavy. I like his music, but I'm not rocking like Rick Owens. I don't have Cardi posters all over my room. And they genuinely get mad if you don't the music. Yo, did you hear Cardi's new unreleased pack? I just ordered some Rick Owens to celebrate. No, I didn't hear it. And aren't those $1,000? Yes, but li listen, listen, just listen. I'm so booty up in the league, I can't speak. I'm not a nerd, I don't need less, but I'm geek. Need my fucking servers, they ride in the wave. Yeah, need my fucking servers, they ride in the wave. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I'm Right? That shit was trash. Well, it was trash. Bro, bro, we can't be friends anymore. You, you can't disrespect Sir Cartier like that. But yeah, if someone says they don't like a certain type of music or whatever music, it really shouldn't be that deep. Next up, we got based. Now, based, it's just saying your opinion and not caring what other people think. One of my hot takes is dark chocolate fuck sucks. And I'm not really filtering myself in that statement or whatever. I'm not saying, well, you know, uh, uh, dark chocolate, it, it can be. Yeah, shut the fuck up. It, you're just being unfiltered. You don't care what other people think. A tier. Then you got Sigma grind set or Sigma or wh whatever it is. This one was used as shit on TikTok as well. Like you see like Patrick Bateman or like the Joker. Like I don't know why people are saying the Joker is a Sigma. Like, bro, what is he on that grind for? I don't know. Like, I don't see the Joker big balling in the movie. No, it, bro was enjoying the collection collapse of society like it's not like a f society type of thing you're kind of just going against the norms and doing your own thing to get dough and just because of the tiktok edits going in c tier if you enjoyed this video hopefully i don't get cut off like the last video but i got another video right there just for you on the screen go watch it now